this hat? Oh, yeah, yeah, do it. No, no, you're good. Definitely got in my glasses. Being 50 is not fun anymore, guys. <laughs> You got to measure three eighths inch from the first part of the metal. That's spec. Three eighths bite on the frame. Three eighths bite on the film. So if you left this seal in, and you caught, you, you filmed right there just to the edge, you're not going to get a good enough bite. So right now, so normally I have backer rod. Backer rod. Just think about that as a backstop. That's going to help you have a compressed speed when you do this. What I'm doing right now is I'm pinning the window. This window has moved and shipping. I think UBS or FedEx, they like to throw things around. So normally, when you have a seal that you put in, a, you would put in a, a backer rod. Okay, so this glass is shifted, so I'm not even gonna try to move it any more than what it is. So for demonstration sakes, We'll act like all the seals are out. We have backer rod in. So backer rod is like a backstop. You can actually cut the seal flush. It can stay in, as long as it stays inside the channel and it, and it leaves that positive pressure on the exterior seal, you're fine. But on the bottom edge, where backer rod comes into effect is on a hot day and the window's hot, the dowel, as it dries, can actually pull down into the frame a little bit and kind of change the shape of it, which we do not want that to happen. So the first thing we're gonna do is mark the window for where the tape's gonna go. So right now, theoretically, this window will be tinted edge to edge. It's close to the edge, no more than eighth inch of a gap. So we're gonna mark it in a few spots. I should have Clayton come up here and take this for me. <laughs> he came to my class not too long ago and did really well. You can see there's a little bit of wet glaze on the window on the other side. I was actually trying to keep it from moving during shipping and it didn't quite work out. So once you mark this, so this is a 13 16 speed. So this would be an intrusion bead. This is your most popular frame that you're gonna run up against. If you were doing a government job and doing a bomb blast bead, it would be a little larger and we would call that a one inch bead. If you guys have any questions, you know, while we're doing this, you know, just ask away. I'll try to answer them as best as possible. So that was a plastic tool with a marker and then that yeah, defined so, your edges. Yeah, so this is actually, we have these designed down to a, uh, I've got the other ones in here as well. So depending on what size bead you have, the bead matches the trowel. We have the stainless steel ones now as well. You can see these here. So this is just a couple differences between the stainless steel and the, and the plastic ones. The tolerance is the same, but the, um, you know, when you do a small project, you can break out the plastic ones. It's a six dollar blade. If your guys break it or they mishandle it, it's really not that big of a deal, you know. The stainless ones are, are for the long haul, but if you don't take care of them and they get deemed up, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time 
having to uh, you know, sand all those little marks out of it that it gets dinged up. So I always keep my stainless ones, you know, pretty taped up when they're not in use. Chuck, is that the uh, recommended width of tape that you like to use? Um, I use it because actually I'm, I'm quite messy. And when I travel, I'm not usually the one always putting the caulk down. I usually have somebody doing that for me. And if they put too much down, then more is going to go out the side. It's not really necessarily a big deal because you can it'll clean up relatively easy. But um, So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get each piece of tape underneath here to pull the next piece of tape. So you have a nice starting point, if that makes sense for everybody. Um, a lot of guys use knives to trim their film or their tape. You just have to be careful. If you're a PPF guy, you're probably really good with a knife and you probably won't score the film. However, if uh, That's a nifty trick with a hard card. Yeah, it, well, the window's moving on me here a little bit, so. In the real world, this thing won't be sliding around like that. So now, when I go to pull, the, once it's troweled, when I go to pull the tape, I'll have a spot to start with, and when I get up to the next piece of tape, it'll help pull it out, so. Okay. But everything is designed within a thousandths of an inch, so it's pretty, pretty close to tolerances and where you want to be at, so. What's that now? What were the two sides of the beads that you mentioned? Like what were the terms you used for? Well, so the bead size, like so this is gonna turn out kind of weird because I have this windows in the frame. So we have a three-quarter inch bead, which would be for your windows that have like a really hard seal and the glass is closer to the frame. We got 13 sixteenths and one inch. And I also have a small five eighths when you've run to those small window frames where you can barely even get, um, well, there's no way to do another attachment system if you have to use wet glaze. Uh, you always want to do the largest bead possible. You ever seen those windows that are like a 22 by 44, little wooden frame, yeah. not much lip? The whole goal is if you can't get the right size bead on there, and that's the only attachment that's going to be feasible for the project, at least put the largest bead that you can on it. So the easiest way to determine that is to take any of your tools, put your marker in it, and see where it lands. If you can get tape on the inside edge just a little bit, that's the largest one, that's the one you go. So taping is a slow part. This is why I say security film is slow money, but it's also very rewarding when it is done correctly. Unfortunately, we're going to have more, even though the, the active shooter events are on the decline, you know, we're going to have more of these. And if it's on a school or something or a project that you were on, you know, it would be nerve wracking, you know, but you definitely want to know that it helped. Even if you bought them two minutes. Doors have a lot of failure points besides the glass, but it's going to be the first attempt of entry for a perpetrator. What are some other areas you can sell security? So, I'm a firm believer that you can improve glass in one manner or another, no matter what the condition of the glass is. Um, but schools, offices, businesses, high-rises, wind mitigation areas, hurricanes, tornadoes, the Midwest is huge with tornadoes, right? Uh, anything on the coastline, I mean, even, say again? Pretty easy to sell on RVs and campers as well. That's interesting, never actually put any type of film, who said that? So you actually put safety film on an RV or a camper? Yeah, that's really cool. That's oh, um, are you like a, like an RV pool or like like a? Uh, like a drivable ice castle as well. Yeah. Do you attach it as well? Huh? Do you, are you able to attach it as well in there? Or? I, I have not. That's why I'm here. Okay. Well, the good news is is 
just by putting the film on it, a lot of times I do eight mil interior, seven mil exterior. So you're at least, ex you're, least ex you're strengthening the glass. In a high wind mitigation um, application, where there's gonna be high winds and, and a lot of water, at least if the glass breaks and, the, and you do have it sealed in and that doesn't break, you maintain some sort of watertight integrity and that's kind of what the hotels and stuff do in Miami. They're more worried about the long-term damage and how long it's gonna take to recover and get back up and rent rooms to everybody. So that's why in Miami and in Florida, they don't, you can't use hurricane type words when it comes to safety film, security film, but you can use uh, high wind mitigation. So that's what we're trying to do, so. All right, so. I actually might need somebody, to have a volunteer to come up here and hold this window still. Anybody wanna come help me with that? You know? Hey, Elliot, there you are. Thanks, buddy. No, I got you. <laughs> so on, on some of my new trials, the stainless steel ones, I actually um, have started welding them onto these handles here. Yeah, just hold it so um, I like using these Makitas now because they're, they're really, yes. Hey, uh, what is your, your uh, is it rule of thumb or policy on uh, painted frames versus anodized frames? Like, are you, uh, like, NDS and these big companies are saying, uh, even though they're charging for it, they're saying, hey, don't do the painted frames because we can't warranty it. Right. Um, and they're saying, like, if it, if it doesn't have enough light, don't do it, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I hate painted frames. We literally are doing schools in Jacksonville, Florida, and I got a picture yesterday from my guy. Taped and caulked it. When I first identified oh, the window, I told the contractor, man, it's probably going to pull that paint. And no. he's like, well, no, I'm just getting a good one so they have it. It does have to be done, but it's not like we can actually go in and remove all that paint. That paint will not stick to an aluminized frame. So I got a picture yesterday. He pulled it. A lot of paint came off and it pulled some of that wet glaze. It will still have strength, but it's, it will break free on a painted frame. Are you doing them for, for those companies? We that did do them. Yes, we, we, we were told we had to do them. Okay. So that's, that's, that's just it. Some of these fights, we can't win. Do they refer to them as a BB bead or are they still No, we got a full bead. We got a full 13, 16 speed on it. But on the smaller ones that do take, look, I know what you're saying, like the flat frames that take like an eighth inch or a quarter inch bead, right. that is not an area that we should be using wet glaze. You can put that bead on there, but it needs a mechanical attachment. There's got to be another way to attach it. Technically, you could, but what are you going to do on a school that's 25 years old that's got, you know, 17 layers of paint on it, you know? So it needs to be removed, but if we can come up with a method to do it, on that one, we need to do a mechanical attachment, maybe something that would actually bond to the window film, but it would actually mechanically screw it to the frame. So there's a lot of things with schools that need to be identified and need to be overcome. I run in these situations all the time. It's kind of like caulking a door. Door, caulking a door the way I do it is only like a way I do it because it works better than caulking it to the stop. Is it the end all be all answer? Probably not. You know, we got some round tables coming up this year. I'm working on a couple things in the US Patent Office right now that will actually bolt over these doors because doors are a, a huge fail point. Even the locks are a huge fail point, you know? So what we're doing is just a minimal thing for now until we find the right answer. And hopefully, with everybody here and everybody doing security film, along your travels, if you find a solution that might make it better for these kids, we gotta work together and make it happen. It's not that it's, it's not that it's wet blaze. This is fantastic for your normal storefront windows, but doors are touchy, man. And unfortunately, doors is going to be the point of entry. And I go to a lot of schools that you know security is a big thing, but yet they got signs on the doors and you know shut this door, leave it shut, or whatever. But then you will have a rock by it, so a teacher can go out and smoke a cigarette. But the one thing I read is the time frame that it takes to identify an active shooter event. If you take the fastest student in school and your nearest classroom to any of the doors, you may probably have less than four to five seconds to, to secure a door and close it. And Columbine had a problem because they had key locks to lock the door from the inside, but the teacher had the key. So a student couldn't just go up and lock the door. So we're learning as we go, but if we can just from this day forward start saving lives with using everybody's mind here and in the window film industry and come together, we can make this, uh, uh, make schools much better and safer.
Unfortunately, as long as they have the doors that they have, we're going to have these challenges. So I use these Makitas because you can actually load these and unload these without having to pull the trigger back. And Makita is probably one of the fastest electric driven um, caulk guns. I use the air power for a lot of my big projects. All right, so when I, when I caulk this, I'm gonna try to leave like an eighth inch light gap is how big I want my bead. I want this trowel to barely touch the very top of that caulk for minimum waste and it's just gonna be easier to trowel it and smooth it out across the tape. The rounded part of a trowel is called the fillet. This is sheerly cosmetic. This is just for your end client. It's not a concave portion. The, the 13 16 is, is the hypotenuse plane. Everything is designed around that hypotenuse. So we're gonna apply the caulk now. I normally do sides, bottom, and side. If you do a really large window on a hot day and you caulk that top and the bottom and you change your caulk out and keep on going, you got a chance of that coming down on you, so. So these windows are two by two. And that's the sausage right there, and that's about eight feet. Now, when you trial this window, you've got a couple things you have to do. You have to reposition your body so that you're pointing this trial into the corner. You want to get 45 degrees. You're good. No, you're good. You, you want to try to trial this at 45 degrees. It's kind of like tinning, right? So you got muscle memory. When you tend, you don't think about how hard you're squeezing, where you're gonna squeeze you next. You can talk on the phone and dance and listen to music and, and joke around. Same thing with wet glaze. When you're not having to think about your motion, the angle of the trowel, the, the pressure of the trowel, and, and in the corners, then everything becomes smoother. Are we looking for a perfect bead? We all want that elusive perfect bead. We all want an elusive per perfect window. But if the bead looks good, let's say 80, 85% or better, but it's done correctly, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a very proper bead. Now, well, where I start and where I end is called, I put a lift off. I try to put that on the same spot on every project that I do so that it looks uniform. So when the client says, well, what's that bump there? You know, you can kind of explain it to them and it kind of looks uniform. So I'm gonna try this window here and see what you guys think. So I gotta reposition myself so I can see it and stay in that 45, 45. Now this corner where the tape peel ball goes is gonna be a little messy, but. I have a message from a guy that bought my tool kit. He said the plastic tools weren't as smooth as the metal tools. He didn't like them. Well, it doesn't have to be really high, really glossy. You don't have to polish this stuff out. We're trying to put a proper bead down. I think we're kind of, some, some, some aspects, you know, we're kind of losing grip with what we're actually trying to achieve. We're trying to put down the proper bead without any type of, with nothing concave and getting that hypotenuse as straight as possible. Uh, I'm gonna pull the tape real quick. Okay. So right here, the tape ripped on me a while ago because the window was moving. So ignore that upper section, but this is how I pull the tape, which, I didn't really plan this out too, but where I was going to put the tape at. We got a trash can we can steal around here? Or? They're bringing you one right now. Ah, somebody's ahead of the game, huh? Thank you. So right here, real quick before I pull this tape, this is called your liftoff. That's, that's way higher than what it should be. So with these trials being as specific as they are, you see that LEU? This thing is um, within one thousandth of an inch of each other, so you can use it forwards, backwards, turn it around, but you come across that, that lift off and you do that and it takes off that little, that little wave and now it's fairly flat. You still have a small anomaly, but what we're trying to do is prevent as many anomalies as possible. And a lot of this caulking can be touched up with soap and water. You can get, get soap and water on it, you can touch it, move it around, you're still going to get it on you. I ruin every single piece of clothes I have and my wife is always so mad about it. She 
truly is. I have nothing nice to wear. I don't want to go to dinner. There's going to be caulk on it somewhere or whatever. It's just terrible, man. Or bleach. I go to clean something I never change. Anybody been in this industry 25 years or higher? That one over there? Billy? Yeah, but Billy's really old, man. <laughs> Alright, so I'm pulling out and I'm pulling up towards the window here. And it's easier to do in, a, in an actual storefront because obviously the window won't move around and you don't have to have somebody holding the window for you. Now the cool thing when if you do and there's a couple of spots that we would normally touch up, but if you, you can see how glossy that is. But if you if this dried and you can actually cut this away and you can lay this on a table, you can get a 1360. You'd see that the, the high was a 1360. So that's what that measures up. What you got, bud? I remember trying to use low and medium high vinyl transfer tape. It comes with a grid on it. Mm -hmm. And then it would cover the entirety of the center, and you just do one rip, not have to stack one top one on it. Um, that's a good idea. I never tried that. I don't know how much time that would save. You, you do schools. There's so many different size windows. I just don't, in my mind, I don't know how that would work out, but it might actually work out fine. I keep rubbing alcohol on my projects. You just dampen it, and it wipes right off the film. You can actually hit soap and water, scrape it off. What you got? Hey, Chuck, since I got you up there, I really am curious. Uh, with the cleanup that's raw on this, yes. it's real important. How do you, what do you use for your dispensing? What do you pull that tape off and what do you put in it? I always put it in boxes, which is actually this is fantastic. I buy them from Lowe's for $1.18. I buy the 18 by 18 by like 20s and I leave the lid up and, I, and anybody that's ever been in my class, that's what we use in class. Because you get on a ladder, you drop it right down in there. Yes, sir. Uh, talk about like your uh, like dog slip solution you use for like clean up and clean your edges and kind of like. Stuff yes. Well. Yeah, I don't have a, a soap and water bottle here, but what I do is I take a lot of Dawn. The bluer the water, the better. You can literally spray the, if you had a, uh, when you pulled your tape, or let's say like you have this little um, gap right here, I can use a small like hotel room card or hard card. I can hit that with soap and water and take that card and bump that line in. Or you can actually take a soap and water and you can actually take the dowel up and ball it up and throw it in the trash can and won't even be on your hand. But if you spray like a high spot down, you can smooth that down and it'll, it'll, it'll smooth out just like glass. As long as you don't have heavy thumbs and you're pushing pushing waves into it. Yes? Well, um, when you pull the tape, there's always a little lip. Do you recommend laying that lip down or do you leave it? There's no lip with this system. No, this has a fillet. This has a fillet designed into it, which is your edge. And as you use that marker, that's how you get that level of fine edge. If you can get it right here, guys, you can zoom in on that. You can see how close that, um, how how flat that little lip is right there. It is completely flat against the frame. That is designed for the end user, for the customer, the client, to actually say that looks good. That's the only purpose that it has is cosmetic. Nothing else. Yes, sir. So that, that vacuum that you were talking about earlier, yes. you would shove in between that glass and the frame so that your the dowel would not settle and you did that leak? Correct. Okay. Now, it won't do that in colder climates and stuff, but you still want to have that backstop to help you compress. Now, on the inside of the frame, I don't know if they, if they show that, you turn it around. I'm going to pull this bottom seal out. All right, guys, you see this little lip right here that drops down inside here? Y'all see this? Yeah. Okay. When you dial straight across here and you got your backer rod down inside there, the bottom part of the frame, that, as it comes off the glass, it'll go around the top of that backer rod or the seal or whatever backstop that you're using. It'll come across that first lip and it will dip down in that channel. If you've ever skateboarded, and you're cruising along and you think you're doing really great and you hit that small pebble and you go forward and the skateboard stops, that's your pebble. That is your initial point of impact. That's, that, that adds so much strength to wet blades being inside that channel. If your seal is inside of here, I'm going to show you this too. Let me cut this off. Now 
let me grab my marker, and I'm gonna mark this. If you wet glaze over this, when you put that tape on there, versus where it's at here, you see how much material that you're losing? You've lost all of your strength. So one hard kick, an ax, a big foot, whatever it could be, can pop that right off because you lost all your strength. If you ever do a government job, like I did the DOD building in uh, DC, that was uh, 4,400 windows, they can actually inspect like six or eight percent of your windows and what they'll come in with a knife, they're gonna cut out a section of dowel, they're gonna make sure there's no more than one eighth inch of a gap between your film and the frame, and they're gonna make sure you actually have a true bead of one inch, and when they mean one inch, they mean a triangulated bead. You can have a one inch bead, but if it's concave, they're gonna go all the way back to that hypotenuse. If you don't have that, they're gonna reject your project. Yes, sir? So could you go in real quick to, uh, I know probably it's a lot of different factors, but go into like uh, the cost of a 20 ounce sausage, how yep. many million feet it'll properly cover, yep. and, um, zero cost, and how much is like basic install pricing in the foot box? Yeah, no problem, so I can do that. Work. So that sausage right now, depending on where you get it from, is say like 20 bucks. If you buy it in bulk, you might get it for 17. Mm -hmm. Some people have, luck and get it for a little bit less. But let's just call it twenty dollars for instance. That was about eight feet. It used the entire sausage, I'll take it out. So it's gone. So that was twenty dollars to do that. And to do that properly. So if you get eighteen to nineteen feet out of wet glaze, you're 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 not doing a sufficient beat at all. You're not doing anything actually, you're just wasting time. So how I price this out is, depending on the window sizes, it's kind of like doing French paints. We all get more money for French paints, right? Well, if we're gonna wet glaze a bunch of small windows, I usually charge upwards of $7 a foot. That includes the wet glaze, the tape, the trial, the labor, and everything. If it's a large project, like the airport that we came into, and I, don't, I can't be the only one jumping over all those windows, but man, there's a lot of big windows there. That would be roughly five to 550, because it's just faster to do larger windows. So 550 to 7 is usually my average price per foot for wet waste. Chuck, no matter the size of the bead. Yes. Whenever I buy the product, I, uh, I can actually call my sealant supply, tell them what I'm doing. Yeah. They can actually calculate how much I'm going to need or sealant I'm going to need. Is that pretty normal for you guys as well? No, because most of them don't understand what an actual security film bead consists of. I, I, this is the biggest thing I see all the time. I hung the film up, I got my glass guy, he's gonna caulk me. Okay, so he goes and caulks his film, or, or caulks your project. When it fails, <coughs> who are they coming back to? Well, this is from the like, same place as the glass people buy their supply from. But they don't understand triangulated beads for security film, I promise you, that's the only problem. I got a lucky You got eight feet on a sausage on a 13 16 bead, which is your most popular bead, unless you're using a bomb glass bead, which is a one inch bead, and that's gonna be six to six and a half feet. So every six to six and a half feet, it's gonna cost you $20 just for just for the wet waste. That's it. So do you have a calculator system built in so you can just figure out the amount so you can have a piece of amount short? Yeah, two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so 90% of my beads are gonna be 13 16. If it's a bomb glass bead, I calculate it at six feet. Every other bead, I, I, so the doors are gonna be smaller beads, some windows will be smaller beads, but theoretically, I go in and calculate, I'm gonna only get eight feet of my, out of the sausage, so. That's how I calculate it. Because you're not gonna go in and say, well, these 19 windows are gonna get eight feet per sausage, and then this one's, only, this one's gonna get 12, you know? It's gonna average it out. Anybody else got any questions? We had another window, man. I was going to have some of y'all play with it. Anybody want to come up here and play with this? We got one side left. A window that size, how much you charge it? What does the product say for a full install? So, so you did the 8-bill or you want 8-bill plus your anchor and you charge it for So this would probably be just guessing off the top of my head. It's like math, probably 175 bucks. Like a door, entryway door that I pull the stops on, film edge to edge, put it seven mil on the exterior, wet glazing inside, put the stops back on, I charge six fifty a door. I'm gonna have to measure it. Six hundred fifty dollars a door. There's no way around it. Yes. Actually, <laughs> true pressure are the ones that have long legs on it, and when you drive them out, they actually come out of the frame about three quarters of an inch. They actually go down into the edge of the door. 
The ones that, that clip out and rotate up, those are the ones that will fail every single time if you if you make these two those. And usually the only ones that you're gonna find are gonna be that the pressure stops that drive into the frame will be your angled stops, but not all angled stops are the same. That's why you have to learn to identify what stops you have. I always recommend get a glass guy in your back pocket, go do your project, and schedule him to do the worst. He can come in and pull all the windows out, you can set him on some makeshift frames, you can film him at the edge, and then you can caulk them. Now here's another way to challenge uh, we've all done doors that have stops on the inside, right? One thing you can do is you can remove the glass from the exterior. You never have to mess with the stop on the interior. Take the exterior out, film it edge to edge, reverse caulk it. So basically you're going to caulk the inside, the back side of the inside stop from the exterior of the door. Then you're going to put your window back in against that and then have the glass side reinstall your stops for you. Yes, ma'am. For people trying to get into flat glass, how do you forge relationships with the school contracts that you're getting? So that's always, that's really tough because you have to go to like the boards. You can actually, so most school boards, I think all of them actually, have meetings. And they cannot deny you to go to these meetings. Now Clayton, he's real good at it because he does a lot personally. I get a lot of subcontract work through large companies like BES and NGS and NPRO and Window Film Depot, things like that. If you want to get a, a relationship with them, it's kind of muddy waters because they're not going to pay you what you really want to make and sometimes that makes you want to speed up and then when you speed up, we don't do what we need to be doing. Or they dictate, hey, I'm going to, sit, I'm going to give you enough call to do 19 foot beads and it's just not going to work out. But if you can get the projects yourself, yes sir? Comments on uh, working with someone else or something yeah. like that, like if you have to, you know, not cheap, but a lower rate. Um, the, the benefit of it is that the time to, if, you're, if you're scheduled, you're, you're starting out, your schedule's not filled. Yeah. You know, all this time that you're, you're not working, you're sitting at home, you know, wondering why you're not busy, you could be working for three bucks a foot and, and making a good living. Totally while, agree with that. While you're selling your own job. Correct. My, one of my installers averages thirty eight hundred dollars a week out of pay. So he's on track to make one hundred eighty five thousand dollars this year. I still have five hundred thousand plus square feet of film delay, plus the wet glaze. You hired? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I am. I've got glass everywhere. So we're doing projects in Denver, Jacksonville. We've got Texas that wants me out here. We've got. Um, my guys are in Wisconsin, I've got Ohio projects, and I got a huge 120,000 square footer in Japan. So, so glass is everywhere. All you gotta do is network, talk to the right people. So teach me on Dr. Japan. What's that? Teach me on Dr. Japan. Yeah, man, I mean so the so, yeah, well I can, everybody's teachable. Everybody here who can lay window film can do this. This is not rocket science, it's just a technique. You guys have all implemented techniques. How long do you have before you take the tape off? Immediately. Immediately? Yes. So on larger windows, you guys put it and take it right out? As fast as you can. Yeah, if you're in direct sunlight, you have a working time frame of about six minutes before it starts to skin up on you. You're going to want to travel. I've, I mean, I've had windows as big as they take like four sausages to even caulk it. So you got to be fast with the gun. Yes, sir? Can you explain your process on a, a full size crew of, let's say, four people doing an install? What, what person is doing what part of that? So we start off every day together with everybody taping windows. We just tape, it's like a tape party. Tape all the way up through lunch, right? Go to lunch, get to eat your hamburger with no, no caulk on your hand, which is really fantastic. Um, I probably ate my share of wet ways. So it's not bad for you. They say it's not your growth, but I've noticed it's zero issues. <laughs> so, <laughs> good stuff there. So, but, um, so we'll tape together all the way up through lunch. And then what I normally do I try to have five people. Five people is a sweet spot because you can always leave two taking. And I use my pneumatic gun, which can put down eight foot of sausage, you know, maybe in about a second and a half to two seconds. So I'll spend my time putting the dowel on while my main guy is traveling behind me and another guy is pulling the tape. And we'll do that until we catch the crew, the other two guys taking. And when we do, we kind of pause, hold hands again, and keep on caulking and we fall back into it again. So the most I've ever hung um, in Wisconsin was a, was a big school district. We hung a case of sausage every 15 minutes. That's four an hour, and we did 2,480 feet in one day. Five guys. Yeah. At three dollars in labor. How much was that job? Uh, about 180 grand just in the coffee. So. 
Yes, ma'am. How long after the sounds like did you talk to the Oh, interesting question. So that all depends on your solution that you use. Um, I think funny you say that too, it's wild. I actually have a solution being made called AccuDrive. So if you use three gallons of water and you put a cup of isopropyl alcohol in it, three ounces of baby shampoo, and this AccuDrive, you can literally, I can actually, I can actually film this window and wipe my edges down and I can tape and caulk it within 10 minutes. But on a normal installation, I would say give it at least an hour. If you don't have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of heat, or anything like that, then just come back the next day. It, but on our, on our worst project, so we normally just try to get all the film up, and then we'll, we'll fall back and then do all the wet ways. We don't usually just try to go back to back, unless it's like one or two windows here and there, so. Uh, do you use it this and for the, the other frame, different this, mm -hmm. is it the same metal? Or so, the larger mullions, like the six and eight inch mullions, a lot of times this mullion is a little closer to the glass and the seal, have you ever had that seal you pulled out but you couldn't get back in? That's the seal you want to leave in but you want to cut it flush. That now becomes your, your back rub, that becomes your backstop. Now because it's closer with your mark, you know, you might get away with a three-quarter bead instead of using a 13 16 because you're still going to get that three days bite on the front and three days bite on the window frame. Anybody else? Yes. Is there any kind of attachment? Yeah, I don't do a lot of residential windows. However, there are mechanical, um, you know, uh, like, I can't think of the name of them right now. Like the Pentagon? Yeah, Pentagon. Yeah, you can get a hold of them. They have different types of attachment. You got to admire the corners and try to make it look good. There's a guy in Dallas, Texas that's got a metal mullion that he's come out with that he just got his patent on it for doors. And it actually goes across the frame, across the top, and down to the um, down to the window panel. So I don't know if he's selling that product yet, but that would be something you would actually have to, you know, take a chop saw, miter it, and cut it all on, on, on site. It's a good product. So, anybody else? Yes, sir. Are you ever following up with safety and putting solar on top, or do you have to do solar and then put safety? So. If I'm going to do a solar, a solar safety type film or security film, I try to use it where it's built in together. But if you're going to go back and add it, you always want to do the solar film on top of that, film it edge to edge, and then you're going to want to cut back that solar film that's on top. Or if you can film handle it right, just cut it where you have at least a three quarter inch gap all the way around so you can actually talk to it. So you want to bite actual security film, you don't want to bite the solar film ever. Yes, sir. Have you ever tried to use Jet Dry in your vapes? Yes, I use Jet Dry. That works really well. Yep. Yep. That works a lot like Matico's 31 to 1. If anybody's ever used Matico 31 to 1, that's a fantastic product as well. So, it, so the 31 to 1, like the Jet Dry with the sand, helps prevent champagneing. One thing with security film versus solar film, solar film has like a adhesive layer that fixates this thin. So you get your security film, it seems like it's this thick. So if you don't have the whole product saturated with your solution, you're gonna end up with champagne, some, you know, some skid marks or some, some anomalies in the film that you won't be able to fix. You just either have to live with it, hope it passes, or you have to redo that window. Anybody else? Can you explain what fogging on the film is? Fogging? That's usually just by the solution that you're using. Or, or your film has been subject to humidity um, before you actually hung it up. But most of the time, that will dry out within three weeks. Have you had that issue? Yeah, it dried out in like two or three days. Okay, that's good. Uh, it, was, it was hung in like an incredibly high humidity uh, school. Yes. Like, air conditioning. And uh, yeah, it was, it was awful. But about three days later, it all Yeah, I, I, um, I usually try to avoid like direct sunlight when I try to hang my film. But fog is normal. That will dry out. I actually tell my, my clients when I do security on this stuff, just ignore it for about three months. Don't pay attention to it. Because some of it takes a while to dry. And some of those um, champagne and stuff will come, will dissipate a little bit and make it less noticeable. Especially if it's got a trail next to it that, that glides out into like a big ghosting, it'll actually come out a little bit. So. How long does it have to wait before it cleans? 30 days. Because we're dealing with schools 
here and there, a problem with the, the high high need time. My memory is almost as good as it is. Because there are high traffic areas, the uh, easy jam is a thing that's daily. Right. Uh, I've gotten complaints directly from from superintendents saying that they are not willing to wait more than a day or two. Well. The, 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 the web phase will skin up within the first 24 hours, but it will still be able to change shape if you push on it. So if they can wait at least maybe three days, at least the shape won't change when they do hit it. But it, it'll be perfectly fine in three days. I don't push that for a week. Really. Yeah, a week's good, you know. I mean, it's on them, right? I mean, you did your job. You got your pictures up. You did it right. They come in and they mess it up. I mean, I mean how do you fix that? I mean, I, I've literally done windows where I've caught them. I'm over here calling the next window, and I've got two guys looking at each other calling and they're talking about it. I'm like, it's crazy how they touch that stuff. You know? <laughs> and you can go back and touch it back up. Yeah. So, yes, sir. Hey, what, what security film is used inside of the Tony store? And it's like, like for storefront or like the actual glass? I've never done it, but I mean, I guess any security film, anything, any, any AP would work. Yeah. Is that, is that an area that you do a lot of, or? No, I'm just, um, I'm like seeing it done on the jewelry store. Okay. Uh, I would find that hard to do because a lot of that glass is thin, so I'd probably break it. So the problem with those cabinets is the glass is only about eight inches. That's what I was going to say. It's way too thin. No way to secure it. Yeah. You're only filming the glass to make it harder for them to reach through the glass. Yeah. I've actually pushed windows. I did a military job. I've actually pushed windows out of the frame. I sprayed out down the ground. I break about six windows a year, that's my average. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a phone call I put out quite frequently, so it's part of the job, man. But the problem is, is if, you, if you're filming a door, now you, and, and insulated glass door is always tough because you got two pieces of glass and that frame's too much wider. But on the, on the, if the glass has been broken before and they've replaced it, you just don't know how strong that glass is. It's always that last time I'm hitting that stop and I'm like, oh, just one more and then that stop will go in. And usually the stop goes in, but the window goes straight through it and I make a phone call. But it's part of it. But if you price it out right, I mean, five, six windows a year, it ain't nothing, man. It's part of it. There's always a glass time you want to come out. The good thing when the glass guy comes out, that's your chance to film it and then you can do it and he gets to put it back together. So, but normally when you add eight mil or 15 mil, sometimes with the stop, there just wasn't quite enough room to accept that 8 mil or 15 mil. Sometimes that, that little bit of area has just enough pressure to break that window, especially if it has a weak spot in it. So, yes? I do want to warn anyone that's new to safety if you're messing with these uh, schools. The, the entryway that they're replacing with these days, uh, I just worked on a school yesterday, they were 10,000 in entryway at the doors. So if you start removing and you're not experience, you really need to step it up and call a glass installer, especially with these $10,000 doors. That could really ruin some of that stuff right now. Yeah, and I think that's where um, this guy Tim in Dallas, Texas, I think that's where his mechanical attachment might come in in a little bit better than a wet glaze, so you don't have to take that door apart. Because I'm not going to take a door apart that's $10,000 either. Because I probably will break one of those doors along the way. You know? How do you remove those stops? So I use a five way tool, kind of okay to use. And if you look at a door, so I guess it depends on the spot, but if you get down to the door and you hit it with a hammer and pry it into that little gap, and then once you get that gap started, you, you push it down, and then you use another five-way tool next to it, and you can walk all the way down. But if you put soap and water on the inside part of the stop, because it's got that little rubber piece that's probably like stuck with years of dirt, it'll help loosen that up and get the stop off. But some of them can just be, be, be pushed in right by the frame and rotated inwards and it'll, it, it'll unlock and just pop right out. That's how easy they come out of some of those. So just be the thumb. So, so imagine the glass breaking, right? So then the, the window falls in with the uh, with the with the walking on it. Then the first pair walks in like a big piece of carpet. No big deal, you know. Alright, anybody else? That's it? Uh, the $10 glass, how do you identify what's a $10 door? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that yet in school. You use it pretty cheap, you know? So. Oh, is it, is it a special, a special door that locks better? It's a special door that's better, so if they're trying to require a 
Okay. Okay. I was just reading about a door on the airplane here saying that there's a certain lock that they've designed now that can withstand 175 blows with an axe. Right. These are reinforced doors, so they're reinforced, they're wind resistant, they're secure. The only thing that's not secure is they're still big glass in them. Right. The way the Texas law works now is that small window, they have literally put in their requirements that if you punch, can punch through it and reach in, they have to be tough. Right. We so find that everywhere. Building their own problems. <coughs> yes. Again, that's a, the that's a design flaws of schools in general, right? They have way too many interways and exitways. They don't have anything secure enough. We don't have enough protocols in, in, in place. We have to buy these kids two to three minutes so the teachers can do their jobs. Yes, sir. Next course. Not about the course. So that's a problem for me. Um, I was I had two classes scheduled per, per week, and then about a month and a half ago, I mean, I took all these projects on, so I can schedule a class, but I just don't know when. I mean, if I get enough people, I'll, I'll break down and do it, but it probably would have to be over over a week. And it's a three-day long course, and that's a new two back-to-back, -back, and that, that's six days. How much is it? $3,000. And a lot of people, first thing they say is, man, that's $3,000, that's, that's too much money. But when you're there for three days, and you're taping and troweling, you're going to go through twelve to $1,500 in product, and it's going to just fill up one one box after another. Where is it? St. Mary's, Georgia, just north of Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. That's way, that way, you, you, there you get to learn how to use back a rod, you learn how to identify your frames. You get to learn how to trial. You get your muscle memory on your corners. You had a question. You had a question. That was my question. What was that? The next course. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I will try to put one together. I'll let Burns know about it. Maybe he can reach out to you guys. We can get a class together. It's, it's, it's a lot to do, but again, I have so much class in front of me. I don't see an end at all. I actually have a company trying to buy my shop, and I can't wait for them to buy it because I got too many schools I got to take care of. I'm more passionate about saving kids' lives, or at least having the chance to save kids' lives. So, Chuck, I imagine you did a lot of trial and error to get to where you're at. Yes. I was doing all that, and then I finally gave up, and I asked someone to show me. So, I'm really recommending that 40 years in this business to have someone actually show you how to do this, hands on. Otherwise, it's going to be it's much easier to have someone correct you right off the bat and you spend a lot of money on sausage and clean up. Yeah, it is. I mean, I got lucky, like, the first job I did was over 4,000 windows, right? So I'm a self-challenger, so with the first window I did, the guy's like, hey, man, this is how you trial this. Trial this real quick. So I trialed it. He goes, oh, good job. Put me on the shoulder and said, this is all yours. So for 10 weeks straight, all day long, I caught 2,000 square feet a day, every day for 10 weeks. And I'm caulking, 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 and I'm challenging myself. Oh, it looks great. We pulled the tape, and we, like, pulled caulk, and I'm like, why are we having these issues, you know? And I kept identifying, 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 trying to make it better. Then... I learned about seals and the triangulation of the bead and the strength, you know. Everything's about physics with windows. It's all about pounds per square inch, whether we install film or you're going through film or you're going through caulk. Everything is set to fail at a certain PSI. So when you learn more about that, and you can put down the proper beads, proper film, so on and so forth, it makes things much better. So I thought I would never do it after that project. I was like, I hate this stuff, you know. I remember from doing my first front strip, I'm like, I'm never going to front strip again. Screw that. You know, I'm too tall for that strip. But, so, anybody else? I'll be here all day, hang out with you guys. So if you guys want to pin it down in the corner, we can talk about it, whatever you want. So, Burns has these tools available through here. So just so you guys know, though, the stainless steel blades, if you buy these, um, they, these are all laser printed up to a, you know, a, a less than a thousandth of an inch tolerance. You'll just have to sand the edges down that rides along the, um, the tape with 1,000 grit. Uh, and then the plastic ones, again, these are great because you just run in and just travel a window or two and throw it down, no big deal, but on a large project, you probably want to use the stainless blades. And then we've got version three handle out, and if you prefer these handles, if you like these, I can weld these up for you and ship them out as well, so no problem. Burns can get them from me or whatever. And that's it, that's all I got, guys. You got anything for me? Thank you.